Monday, April 16th, 1962. Live from New York, the CBS Television Network presents Calendar with Harry Reasoner and Mary Fickett. Good morning. Good morning. Today on Calendar, you'll meet one of the greatest film comedians of all time, Harold Lloyd. Harry will be talking to Harold Lloyd, and you'll see sequences from some of the films that made him famous. None of this film has ever been seen on television before, and I think you'll agree with us that it's pretty funny. I'll be back after this message. Hello, let me speak to Robert. The miracle of communication, man's great gift, as well as man's great problem, made more difficult for children born with speech handicaps. These children are receiving speech therapy at an Easter Seal treatment center. This is Colin. Will you come over and play? This is Rob. If I can play, this is the way I can play too. Easter Seal centers help children suffering from all types of crippling to overcome their handicaps. Hello. Fight with them against crippling and give to Easter Seals. Calendar's World of Fancy. It may seem hard to believe if you've been to the movies lately, but once upon a long, long time ago, there were movies made whose only purpose was to make people laugh. The best of them were built around one character. Everything seemed to happen to him. Charlie Chaplin was mostly funny, but he got extra laughs by varying slapstick comedy with sentimental pathos. well-intentioned baby face who could never act grown up no matter how hard he tried. contract that prohibited him from ever cracking a smile. He coped with the world, and moviegoers rolled in the aisles as he went through picture after picture with his frozen face and deceptively mobile body. whoever lived has made more people laugh longer and harder than Harold Lloyd. The character was different from the others. He seemed and looked normal enough, even handsome, and understood what was going on in the world, but the wildest things kept happening to him anyway. we try to find out why they don't make movies as funny as that anymore. Harold Lloyd is here with us this morning, and we'll ask him that question after this message. Okay, gang, here they are. 
Well, I think we got a good one this week. You're really going to like this. Now, the, uh, the first scene in here, page one, starts with me coming down the corridor, see? And what is it? Now, that's Hollywood. He's been working here 35 years. How's your stuffed bear cat, baby? Where's your raccoon coat, Cooper? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this all about? The dark glasses, Charlie. Oh, oh, well, I hurt my eyes with sun yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. Let me have a look. I'm a doctor, you know. Now, wait a minute, Rocky. On our show, you're a doctor. Look, I'm a nurse. Let me see, too. Look, a picture of Wally Berry from The Champ. An autographed photo of Jackie Coogan. Eric von Stroheim and Eden Aldi. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you both pretty well. What is it you want? Laughs. Yeah. Oh, well, that's easy. Watch Hennessy. Every Monday night on most of these CBS television stations. Need a Naldi. Back to Calendar's World of Fancy. You're watching a short sequence from a film made by one of the real masters of comedy, Harold Lloyd. Harold Lloyd lives in a pretty room mansion in Hollywood today, and he's somewhat of an enigma to the rest of the country. He's spent a strange life. Among other odd things about this man, is he has been married for 39 years to the same wife, and he neither drinks alcoholic beverages or smokes tobacco. We thought you'd be interested in meeting one of America's great comic geniuses, Harold Lloyd. Welcome to Calendar, sir. Thank you very much, Harry. I suppose on the basis of that introduction we gave, I have to ask you, why don't they make movies that funny anymore? Well, I wouldn't go that way. I think they make very funny movies today. I think they're quite dumb uh, that I was making them, especially in the silent period. They were so much more visual. Uh, today, they, uh, the dialogue seems to take up so much of the time that they don't, they don't have that action and that uh, the uh, opportunity for thrills and and the surprise business. They, in fact, uh, they seem to have more or less lost the pattern that we had at the other time. I know if I were to start today and dig up what we call gag men, idea men, it would be quite difficult. There's not any men, there's very few trained for that. You take Bob Hope, for instance, he has a core of men that work with him on, uh, on dialogue. And they, they get with him and they throw ideas and. Uh, verbal, of course, and he chooses and takes out what he wants. Well, I did exactly the same thing. You did? Men. Yes, I did. I'd send them off separately. Maybe I'd have six or seven, sometimes less, sometimes more, and uh, you'd send them out to work singly or in pairs, or maybe I might work half a day or all day with them. And one fellow will throw an idea, choose that idea, and or maybe you'd just take the thought he had, and then we'd all go to work and put it in. And uh, it was a cooperative idea like that. But they, those men don't exist today. One, that. one thing you people, <coughs> one thing you people did in those silent movies was create a character and stick to it, didn't you? Your, but your your character was different from uh, the others. You were not always the patsy. Well, you see, I used to do all comic clothes stuff in the early days. I had the big shoes, I had the tight clothes. In fact, I played several different characters. I played one called Willie Work. He used to have wide shoulders and a little cat mustache and a uh, high hat. Another one. Uh, was called Lonesome Luke, and his clothes were tight with a little funny hat, and he had a funny little mustache. But when I adopted the glasses, it uh, more or less put me in a different category, because I became a human being. He was a kid that you would meet next door or across the street. But at the same time, I could still do all the, uh, the crazy things that we did before, but you believed them. They were natural, and your romance could be believable. We've got, uh, we've got one sequence that I think demonstrates exactly how clever you could be with the glasses. The, oh. the thing in the subway, which we could roll now, which shows that sometimes you came out looking pretty good. Thank you. 
You were also, I think, the most famous, if not the first, person to make yourself funny while also being in danger. I want to run a little bit of the film when you're on the awning before we get later to the famous clock thing. Was that, uh, were those really hazardous yeah, now, events? We were actually up as high as the picture shows. Uh, the people were under us at the time we were shooting this scene. I have a hard time finding people to do that today. I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it again? Would you do it again if you were starting out? The no, I don't think so. I've had my uh, my period of that. Uh, it uh, it was hazardous. With the you know one of the things was that we did about four or five of these uh, uh, thrill pictures, and it was hard to get to keep from being established as a thrill comedian. Yeah. Because that was just it. I was noticing here, we're playing the pictures with the piano, of course, which you have to do. But uh, these pictures uh, generally were played with the uh, large that we have now that uh, we're going to release. We play with a 50-piece orchestra. Well, I wish we had the 50-piece <laughs> orchestra. But in the old days, at, at our piano players doing exceptionally <laughs> well, in the old days, we used to play it with piano like that. And it's very novel. I'm, I'm getting a kick out of seeing it uh, done that way. We're going to look at some more uh, movies and talk to you some more, but right now we have to interrupt. I'll be back with Harold Lloyd and more film after this message. We're talking to Harold Lloyd. We have one of his most famous sequences here, and we'll ask, some, ask him some questions about it after we take a... You know, I think uh, probably the best news of the month for a lot of people is the fact that there's a new Harold Lloyd movie. Now, you haven't been going out and climbing clocks again, have you? Uh, well, what we've, we've done is called uh, Harold Lloyd's World of Comedy. And what we've done is we've taken sequences from a great many of our pictures. A lot of them long, some of them as much as uh, two reels long. And we've, we've got introduction. And uh, uh, the thing is that it's loaded with surprises, action, uh, thrills, situation. And uh, as I said, it, we put sound effects all through mm -hmm. it. And there's a limited amount of narration. And of course, a music score. Whole generation of uh, people who never saw you will now be able to get a look at it. I think they're going to like it. We've previewed it a number of times. And we've tried to preview it on Friday. When we get in this, uh, well, practically two generations, I guess. <laughs> And uh, uh, so we previewed it on, uh, on, uh, on Fridays when the uh, kids were out of school. And the, uh, the response, uh, we've been most gratified with. It's been splendid. It's really, it, uh, it, it, they react to it practically the same as when I made it, when, and, uh, made it first. You know, when you were talking before the program, and you were speaking about the character you played in all those movies, the boy with the glasses. Yeah. I noticed you kept saying he or the boy. Is he a separate person to you? Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've always done that. To me, uh, my character on the screen, of course you know, <laughs> <laughs> the years have added a little uh, average de poise around here, but uh, I always referred to him as, uh, as he or the boy or the, or the character or something of that kind. I don't know. I always regarded myself as a, uh, as a character on the screen, which we were, which I was, even though uh, basically I wore glasses and... Uh, uh, but our characters changed with the different pictures. One time he might be a very brash, another time an introvert, another time a 
we, a hypochondriac type of a person, but uh, it, it was according to the picture we did, uh, and that lent a little different type of comedy. Now, we did, uh, we have one of the sequences in, uh, in uh, World of Comedy, where I'm in this Latin American country, and uh, uh, I arrived there thinking that my health is bad, which is nothing wrong with him at all, and I think it's going to be peaceful and calm, but I walk right into the middle of a revolution. And I go blissfully around, all <laughs> riding over everything, people getting knocked over, <laughs> killed, and everything. But it's a different kind of a character entirely from what you saw mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the subway. There, he's just a regular, natural, normal kid. And Grandma's boy, uh, he's, a, he's a very cowardly, shy type of individual. And uh, so it went on. And I, that's one reason I think that, that my having been off the screen for so long and coming back, the type of picture we're doing, uh, World, uh, World of Comedy will be a, a good introductory one because it'll show a certain gamut of the type of comedy that we did. I'd like to wind this up. We were out of time. I'd like to wind it up with what I think is one of the funniest sequences you or anybody else ever shot, the water fight in the... Yeah. I... <laughs> better than ever. Thanks very <laughs> much, Mr. Lloyd, for oh, coming here, and good luck with the new picture. Thank you. It's thank uh, you. been a great pleasure to have you here on calendar. I think everyone will want to see that new movie. I'll be back with the news after this message.